Here are two coin dies that I'm currently working on. This one was a success. This is the, the re reverse Im image of Vivare, Vivare Militare Est, to live is to fight, with uh, an eagle perched on arrows. I'll show you a picture on Fusion 360 so you get a, a better look. This is actually taken from, well, it's supposed to be period correct for the, uh, the, the, Roman, the Roman forces. And this one worked well. Um, this, this die is made out of 52100, and this is fresh off the mill, hasn't been um, polished or heat treated or anything. This was the second uh, die that I did, and is a good example of when something might look good in your modeling software, it doesn't look good in, re in real life. Uh, the text it was it was a it was a font that I'd never used before, and in particular, the A's. It's just not going to mint well. Certain parts of the letters are narrower than others. I've remodeled, reprogrammed uh, these letters to a font that I'm familiar with that I know works well with minting coins. And I'm going to run it again. I'm going to. I'm actually going to reuse this coin die. I'm just going to. I'm going to take it down one millimeter. I'll get a. I'll Z probe here on the flat, and it's going to take everything down one millimeter. And then redo this. This is called a Stoic Flame. Okay, that I programmed basically by hand, just trying to to make a cool looking flame. It's very simple. Very simple uh, coin die. And I do all of my programming in Fusion because for the moment my post processor is tied to Fusion 360. That's the only one I have. So unless I'm going to do the G code by hand, which I don't want to do, I've got to use Fusion 360. So let's, let's uh, go over there and I'll, I'll show you what we're working with. I have three assemblies here a top die, the coin, just a representation of a coin and the bottom die. And how I generally do this is I'll program I'll design a coin, okay, top and bottom, and then I'll use this coin to um, I'll use this combine function to use this as a tool to cut into these dies. So for example Here's the, uh, the top die. Here's the top die after combining with the coin that I programmed. And you get a better view of this is, you know, a lot of military, even I was in the U.S. Army, and this is very reminis re reminiscent of some of the symbology, the imagery that military forces use. And this, from the sources I found, this is a good example of what the Romans, the Roman Legion, or I'm not that great of a history buff, buff but what the Romans used um, as their flag. Um, anytime that I have a message on one of these coins, I like to tie it with uh, something like this. Uh, this. It gives a certain tactile, you know, it's nice to be able to have that tactile response of even just rubbing your, th your thumb over a, a a, a minted coin and feel that eagle and then at the same time contemplate the message on the coin. So vivare militare est, that doesn't mean you know that you want to be in fight club your whole life. To live is to fight. That's not really what it means. It means life is a struggle. All life and good things come through struggle. Like you want to be in good shape, you want to be strong, you know you're gonna hit the gym or you're gonna do certain activities which is a struggle, which is a fight to get to where you want to be. So that's really the, the message that, that I have here. And again, this was a success. Now, if we look at the bottom die, you know, again, I don't have, I don't have the old text. We saw it just, just, we just saw it on, on the coin, or sorry, the die that I 
engraved. But if you remember, this portion of the A came up very nicely, but this was just was very, was uh, too thin. Now this font, I know I've used it before, it will work well. And this says Amor Fati. Well, we can just look at the coin for that, right? Amor Fati, to love fate. So this message, this text says Amor Fati, as you can see here. And that means to, you know, love your fate, for good or for bad, to love what happens in your life. And on the bottom of the coin, it says presencia, excuse my pronunciation. Latin is sort of a dead language. I don't know how one would pr pronounce that. But this is to be present, to be mindful, to be in the moment. All right. So now let's take a look at the, let's take a look at, at the tool paths and what I'm going to be doing today. So we're going to be working on the bottom die. Let me turn that model on. All right, so I have a, a X and Y uh, probe programmed to get the center of the coin. Okay, I'm gonna do the Z manually on a, on a nice level spot of this die. Okay, uh, I'm going to face it with a quarter inch end mill. I already have it loaded and, and uh, have the, the tool length, so that'll work just fine. It'll, it'll take a little bit of time, it'll take about five minutes, but that's okay. I'm going to I'm going to go most of the way down and then I'm going to do a cleanup uh, facing pass and try and get as good a finish as I can. I'm going to do an adaptive to go around and reestablish this shoulder and then followed by a contour. This is an indexing contour and then I'll take off the remaining amount of material on this first shelf and then this little ring here. I'm going to use a 1.57 millimeter end mill to rough out most of this flame. And then that'll be the very last stop is to go around with a 60 degree tool, engraving tool to outline this and to really zoom in on this. I have the depth down actually below the floor of this flame, but it really makes it gives a little little zing, a little ridge when you when once the coin's minted that adds kind of a 3D uh, quality to it. I've got in one tool path the Amorfati and then another tool path Presentia. I, I separate them because well let me pull up this tool path here. I separate them because I, I want to stay kind of in a, in a single geographic area when I'm doing this engraving. I'm only I'm going down in 25 micron uh, depths of cut, and if I'm bouncing around, uh, it just takes a lot longer. So if you, I find that if I number one stay in a general geographic area, and then number two reduce my retract and feed height. Here I've got it to two millimeter. I've done it as low as one, but that shaves many many minutes off the off the tool path. This tool is running at 10,000 RPM. My spindle max is out at 12,000. So I generally engrave between 9,600 and 10,000 RPM. And that translates to, to about 500 millimeters per minute. Okay. And uh, yeah, again, we're going into 52100 tool steel. So, and actually, let me change this. I'm going to be running air. I have the air on a trickle, uh, just enough to blow the chip so I'm not uh, engraving over chips, it blows everything out. And toning down on that air, I don't run it full blast because then my compressor would be constantly filling up and running all the time. I do not want that. Okay, we got air. All right, and we'll, uh, we'll get some good milling shots of engraving this and see if it works out in the end.
I'll call that a success. So these new letters work, look considerably better. I can really make out that A. And even the floor of the flame looks better. So that is good. I'm not particularly fond of the face mill operation with the 3 8 end mill. It feels smooth, but even though my depth of cut is so slight, you can see a little bit of deflection from the end mill as it went through. Maybe I I should just do climb milling on that and not both ways and that would eliminate that. But again, it's smooth, just the shadow of a deflection. All in all, I think it looks good. I'm very pleased with all the other tool paths. I think I have a very good recipe for 52-100. It's not aggressive at all, but I'm not, I'm not trying to break any speed records. The next step, I will heat treat the dies and then clean them up. A little polish, make sure they're smooth, and put them into operation. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Bye.